All right, I'm going to take another look at the uh, stock market today. Um, as I s said many times in the past, um, governments um, figured out in uh, 2011 that if they could uh, prop up the stock market, it's you know pretty much impossible to have a recession. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of government intervention to um, prevent the stock market from falling. I don't know whether or not they're going to be able to continue to hold it up. I'm kind of of the opinion now that, that we're probably going to have a mild recession uh, as people just get nervous about the, uh, the coronavirus and they start to uh, cocoon and just you know, sit in their house and they don't go out. They don't uh, go to Starbucks or go to restaurants or go to events. And uh, that's probably just going to have uh, an economic impact. Uh, and, and cause a slowdown. That's what causes recession when middle class spending comes to a halt. That's usually caused by a spike in the price of energy. Um, over the last 40 or 50 years, that's typically been what has caused recessions in the past. But uh, this one might be different. Uh, obviously, we don't have a big spike in energy, but we do have a, a driver that could um, collapse middle class spending. Um, so uh, that's kind of the principle I'm working on right now is that um, we're probably moving into a mild recession. It's not going to stop the long-term bull market because the innovation cycle is still young. Uh, we've still got another 10 or 15 years to go and uh, before the innovation cycle gets mature. Uh, you know, before we get to the point to where we're, we're seeing, you know, a thousand companies all piling into the artificial intelligence sector or uh, into the biotech sector because, you know, the prices are just going crazy to the upside and people are becoming irrational. We, we don't have that kind of behavior yet, so I don't, I don't think this is the end of the, of the bull market. But uh, remember, we had a recession in 1990 during the last secular bull market, and it did not, again, it came early in the innovation cycle as well, and so it did not end the, the bull market. So even if we have a recession here, it, it's not going to end uh, the bull market. Even, even though we might technically have a bear market, which would be a, a drop in the S&P of 20% or more. So um, moving over to the S&P, you know, I, I said, um, you know, they would uh, fight and fight to try and prop the market up, keep the S&P back above the 200-day moving average, and that's exactly what's happening today. We've we've got a battle going on. They're, they're trying to... Um, they're trying to prevent the natural price discovery. Uh, if we're um, going into recession, then the, the market is going to try and um, price that in. Uh, governments are going to try and, and stop that. Uh, so, you know, it, it, this is exactly what I predicted was going to happen. Uh, we would have a, a battle all day today to try and prevent the S&P from dropping back below the 200 week, sorry, 200 day moving average. Um, if the employment report comes in, uh, week tomorrow, which it, it probably will, um, we may break this um, manipulation and head to the downside. As I've said before, we really should have one more leg down. That This is just how almost all intermediate cycles progress. Well, natural ones anyway. They'll, they'll have an A wave down, a bounce, B wave bounce, and then a C wave that undercuts this. And uh, this daily cycle is very young still. They usually uh, run about 35 to 45 days trough to trough. Here was our last trough. We're only about 18, 19 days into this. So uh, I usually when I, um, you know, start to think that there's going to be an exception to the rule, it usually just comes back to bite me in the ass. So I'm, I am not going to assume at this point that the government stopped this daily cycle prematurely. I'm going to assume that the natural course will, will run and we will get uh, a C wave down that will break below this, uh, that the um, recession that's probably going to happen is probably going to be more powerful than the government's ability to uh, keep the market artificially propped up. And, and if I'm wrong, then at some point I'll... I'll you know, get back on the on the long side. Um, I mean, realistically, uh, these intermediate rallies last uh, 30 weeks or longer. 
So, you know, you're not, you're not going to miss anything by um, waiting to see if the government intervention can uh, keep this thing propped up or whether we're, or not we get a natural um, deeper move down that fully dis discounts a recession. Uh, one of the things I always look at is the banks. Uh, there is no futures market, so there's, there's no way for the uh, government to artificially prop up the banking index. They would have to just go in and buy uh, all of the banking stocks to uh, turn the banks back up. So you can see here uh, the, the banks are, are clearly um, saying that the, um, the indexes are lying. They're, they're, we, we don't have true price discovery going on in the indexes at the moment. Uh, the banks are telling you that, that we were probably heading uh, into uh, a mild recession. So I would be very careful with long positions in the stock market, tight stops, uh, if you are trying to play this bounce. And uh, like I said, at this point, I am going to assume that, that we're going to get a natural move down into the uh, intermediate cycle low, and that would mean um, a, a second leg down and a lower low on the S&P. And if uh, the government uh, is able to artificially uh, stop that move, then it, uh, at some point I'll just um, jump back in. And if I miss a week or so of the, uh, you know, of, of a 30-week rally, it, no big deal. There's there's always plenty of upside to go. As I've said before, I, um, you know, we've already basically tested 10,000, like I predicted was going to happen. And so the the next leg, uh, once we get past this, is going to be the leg that will take the NASDAQ um, probably towards 20,000. And and since I, I think we still have at least 10, maybe 15 years to go in this bull market, uh, I think we're going to go well above 20,000 before this bull market is over.